Hey guys, I uh, thought I'd do a quick video of uh, different things I do to my uh, MBX8 e-buggy. Uh, some of this stuff will be obviously be the same on the nitro car. Um, just different different things that I do and I'm sure other people do. Um, so, you know, we'll get to it. Uh, first thing I get a lot of questions about is actually the center diff. If, if you look there, I'm sure you can see that I got the, uh, the top center cut out. Uh, the reason I do that, there's a couple reasons actually. Um, first off, really easy to set gear mesh. One, uh, it's just so much easier to be able to, you know, to feel it and, uh, and get that adjusted. Um, also, you know, the rotation of the gears is outward. So any, anything coming in will, will get shot back out. Um, it's rare something gets stuck regardless, but if something if something did, it's gonna get pulled underneath the cover going this way. Um, this way, nothing could get could get stuck in there. You can see if there's any fine pebbles or anything stuck in your spur. Uh, it's just easier maintenance-wise, gear mesh-wise, visually, um, and it doesn't impact performance at, at all. It doesn't affect the, the flex of the chassis or anything like that. So uh, that's the reason I do that. Um, another thing probably to, I noticed a lot of people doing and to watch out for is on the on the D block here when you're tightening up these screws um, obviously you want them tight but you want to make sure that the arm you have a, a, a tiny bit of play you don't even have to feel it as long as you can hear it uh, just to make sure the rear end is free um, so as you're tightening these obviously you want to do them evenly and if you don't hear or feel a little bit of play there, just just back it off a hair. You don't want to you don't want to pinch down uh, on the on the arm, obviously. So uh, tighten them down good, and just make sure you have a little bit. If you have a little too much, you can crank them down a little bit more. Um, but you don't want to have it where there's there's you don't want a large amount of play, obviously. But just a just a a, a tick back and forth, and, and you and you would be good. Um, Another thing why we're on the back is I have the uh, Avid extended mounts up here. And I know a lot of people are extending them one way or another. The Avid is actually uh, plus 4.5. So that's that's pretty harsh, you know, to, to move them back. Um, so uh, two things actually on that, as you can see, hopefully you guys can see that. Um, I have the nut on there backwards so the rounded part of the nut is actually touching the bushing for the shock so it's not the flat against it it's the round part which leaves you some play you want that to be free another thing you can do also is the ball you know you can flip that to move the shock forward or back now normally we would have that shock pushed forward with the large part of the ball on the back side but if you want to reduce that angle a hair, you can just flip that ball and kick that back. So you could reduce this. I don't have the measurements on the ball exactly. But instead of plus 4.5, I'm imagining it'd probably be plus, probably plus 2.5 or three millimeters. So the angle, the angle is not so, so harsh of it being back. And that also reduce any type of binding. So you can go the four, full 4.5, but if you want to reduce a little bit, just flip that ball on the bottom and you could bring that shock back and not have such a drastic, you know, angle. And, and you wanna make sure obviously that that's not binding. Um, another thing to do that's, that's, that's good is to put a small hole in your boot, whether you use a hole punch or, or um, just poke a hole in it or, or cut it, just a hair. Um, I wouldn't cut it, but some people do, but the, the cuts will travel. But anything to vent that a little bit, these things fit snug, which is great, but they will fill up with air. And uh, they'll either fill up with air or they'll actually suck themselves right to the, to the shock shaft. So um, you wanna vent that, it doesn't have to be anything major, um, but just something to be able to let air get in and out. So, um, and then one more thing, trying to just cover some things that people might not uh, think about is your screw for your rear brace. Uh, I think almost all of us probably run the the rubber mount in there. 
obviously to let it flex. Um, when you when you put that screw through and you put that nut on, don't clamp it. Don't clamp it tight. Have that put it on there. Use a nylock nut and put it on there where it's snug, but you can still spin this with a wrench. So let's see if I put a ball. I'm gonna use a ball tip so I can get to it. So you want to have this where you can still spin that screw. I'm able to actually spin that, um, but obviously the nut's holding it in place. Because if you're, if, if you're gonna use that for what it's made for with that rubber grommet and then you smash it, uh, you're, you're probably not getting the benefit of, of having that, that rubber in there to, you know, to let it flex. So uh, just a few things I, I thought about. And um, you know, uh, other than that, um, that's all I got right now. So uh, again, that's just stuff I do. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, and I'm no pro, but uh, hopefully you gain something from it. All right, thanks guys.